Today we will create a complete video project using 101 Final Cut shortcuts in under 15 minutes. After you created a new library, Final Cut also creates a default event. Events represent the bookcases in the library that store completely different types and genres of books. In our case, we will call default event projects. But by pressing option N, you can create more events to separate projects from your footage or music. Similar to how each of the bookcases contains bookshelves keeping the books of certain writers together, we can press Shift Command K to create keyword collection for different types of footage we have, for example, iPhone, B rolls, or green screen. Lastly, to fill out these shelves with books, press Command I and import all of your videos into corresponding keyword collection. By the way, if you leave this option checked, all the keyword collections will be created automatically based on the names of your folder. Now, go to the event we called Projects and press Command N to create a new project. Ok, there are four main ways to transport your footage from the browser into the timeline. The first is to press E. This method appends the selected clip at the end of the primary storyline. If you want to insert the clip between two clips, however, place the playhead between them and press W, otherwise it will split the clip into two parts. But let's say you want to split the clip, but you don't need the second half. Just press D, which overrides the storyboard and deletes everything beyond the playhead automatically. Finally, my personal most used option Q that connects the clip to the primary storyline by placing it above as a connected clip. Sometimes you need the end of the clip to be at a certain position rather than the beginning. To achieve that, perform a back timed insert by pressing Shift and previously mentioned D and Q. Note that Shift plus E doesn't work, because apparently back up end doesn't make sense. It's likely that when you work with the long clips, scrolling through them to find something particular becomes time consuming. Press Command Option 2 to toggle between the list view and film strip view of the browser. Here it is. By default, Final Cut inserts the clip with both the video and the audio, so people usually use Shift Ctrl S to detach audio from the video. However, you can actually press Shift 2 to change the edit mode to video only or Shift 3 for audio only. Shift 1 switches back to both video and audio mode. Copying the existing clip into the secondary storyline is as easy as pressing Ctrl-C to copy and Option-V to paste the both. Alternatively, you can hold Option to do the same. Press M to add a marker or Option M to add and immediately modify it. Markers in Final Cut have a versatile functionality, but I use them a lot to automatically align two clips. If they don't snap together, you can press N to toggle the snapping option on and off. Now all the clips will stick to each other like the glue. Another application of the markers would be to mark the beginning of different chapters and navigate through them with Ctrl semicolon and Ctrl single quotation mark. Once the marker becomes useless, delete it with Ctrl M or Shift Ctrl M to delete all markers of the below clip. Now I realized I want to replace that clip with another one. Select the clip that needs to be replaced, select the new clip and press Shift R to replace. As you can see, the length was also changed. To keep the original length, use option R instead. But if you want to add a clip at a certain position only, set the in and out points by pressing I and O respectively, and then any insert options like Q to connect. Alternatively, press R to select the range manually and do the same. Navigate between in and out points with Shift I and Shift O, or delete either of them with option O and option I. Even better option is to select the range of the clip automatically by pressing X. I use that a lot to add titles above the specific clips only. And by the way, you can use the same shortcuts to set in and out points directly in the library browser. Additional advice would be to press Shift Command I and Shift Command O, which selects multiple ranges at the same time. Press F to favor parts of the clip that you are going to work with. You can make sure that the selected range is favored if it has the green bar at the top. All the favorite segments are stored separately, which allows you to focus on the best moments without continuously looking for long original clips. Ok, time to have a look at our rough cut. Besides space key, you can also preview your work with L key to go forward, K to stop and J to reverse. Pressing J or L multiple times increases the speed of the playback, whereas holding J and L previews the clip at a slower 0.5 speed. To replay the specific part only, press C which selects the clip in the primary storyline and then slash to replay the selected clip. Note that it also works with the range. To repeatedly examine that section, press Command L which loops the playback or simply use Shift question mark that plays around the position of the playhead within a range of 2 seconds from each side. Selecting the below clip with C shortcut is also useful in combination with command arrow keys, which allow to navigate between neighboring clips. 
with the connected clip from the secondary storyline being selected. Move it by one frame to the right with dot key or to the left with comma. Combine this with shift and you already move it by 10 frames instead of one. However, if you want to move the playhead by 10 frames and not the clip itself, press shift right arrow to advance or shift left arrow to move back. One of the best shortcut combinations is to navigate between clips with up and down arrow keys, then pressing left or right square bracket to select the end point of the corresponding clip and then comma to shorten the clip or dot to lengthen the clip. Note that you can also use it with shift key. However, if you try to do the same with the clips in the secondary storyline, they won't automatically stick to each other. Therefore, create your own storyline with command G. Now both of them are connected with each other as if they were in the primary storyline. Alternative method is to hold G while you are moving the clip from the browser into the timeline to create a storyline immediately. Quite often you might need an empty space between clips. Movie trailers, for example, use them when the tension reaches its peak. Press Option W to insert a gap in between or Shift Backspace to replace the clip with the gap. There is also an option to insert a placeholder with command option W, which is used for storyboarding. You might not need the storyboarding, but you can still make this command useful for yourself by choosing another generator as a default one and then press command option G. By the way, you can also press command option 1 to go to titles and generators tab and do the same by changing the default options for the title and lower third to those you use the most. Once you've done that, press ctrl T for the default title and shift ctrl T for the lower third title which in my case is the adjustment layer. Now I don't like the length of this adjustment layer so let's cut it. P for blade tool is fine but command B is faster and more precise since it splits the clip immediately. Add shift to command plus B and now you can blade all layers at the same time. Even better alternative that I use most of the time is to press option square brackets to trim the part before or after the playhead or option backslash to trim the part before or after the selected range. There is also an option to change the duration manually by pressing ctrl D and typing the precise value of seconds and frames you want to keep. But personally I find it useful in creating the animation cycle by changing the duration of sprite images to one frame. Pressing option G combines them together in a compound clip which can be opened and modified separately. And if you want to revert it back to original, break the compound clip with shift command G command. You've probably noticed that as you add more and more clips, as messier the timeline becomes. Keep pressing command minus to zoom out or command plus to zoom into the playhead or shift Z to resize the timeline to fit in the timeline. However, although command plus is useful, the better option to zoom into the small segments of the timeline is by selecting the needed zoom range with the Z key. It's all cool and fun, but I was blown away when I realized that we can also select the viewer window with command 3 and use the same shortcuts to zoom in, to zoom out and to fit the view. Similarly, command plus 1 selects the library browser and command plus 2 selects the timeline. Those two are useful in combination with command F shortcut which opens the search bar to find files within the browser or a timeline. Ok, time for an ultimate try that a lot of people don't know about. Press Shift T to turn on the transform tool, Shift C for the crop tool and Option D for the distort tool. And let's add some motion with the keyframes. After pressing Ctrl V, the video animation window pops up. Here you can adjust all of your keyframes or even press Option key to create a new keyframe. For a quick navigation between all of them, press option semicolon or option single quotation mark. That shortcut works with all kinds of keyframes, even audio keyframes that you can set by holding option and clicking with your left mouse button on the audio level of your sound. That one is a must to know shortcut to control the volume of your music or dialogue in different parts of the song. Sometimes you might need a single frame out of your video as an image. For that purpose we have option F shortcut which inserts an exact copy of your previous frame as a still image. Note that it also splits the clip in half. So if you want to resume the video after it was stopped without cutting it in half, the better choice will be shift A shortcut which holds the video at zero speed for a certain amount of time that you can regulate by dragging these handles left and right. That whole function comes from a retime editor that you can activate with the command R and believe me, you will need this shortcut if you want to have slow-mo or the time-lapse in your videos. Although if you want to set a precise speed value or reverse the clip, better use Ctrl Option R since it opens a custom retime editor. Awesome, but we can do better. Instead of modifying the speed of the entire clip, press Shift B to create two independent speed segments. Those are great to use at the end of one clip and beginning of the next one as a transition. And if you didn't like the result, select the range that you would like to return back to original speed and press Shift N, that stands for normal. Alternatively, press Command Option R to reset the speed of the entire clip. 
Once you've done tweaking your footage, you might want to add effects from the effect browser that you might toggle on and off with command 5. If you have a particular effect that you use most of the time, set it as a default effect and press option E to apply to the clip. By default, it's the color correction. The same goes for the transition browser. Toggle it on and off with command ctrl 5, change the default transition and press command T to apply. By default, it's the crossfade dissolve. Now, what if you still want to apply the color correction or change the parameters of the FX that you just added? One way would be pressing command option 4 to select the inspector window and then go to the next tab with control tab or to the previous tab with shift control tab. If you need to go straight to the color correction though, press command 6 for the color inspector and command 7 for video scopes. These video scopes can help you to understand which parts of your clip are overexposed or too dark. I would recommend you to work with color wheels, but if for some reason you prefer color boards, command ctrl C E S might help you to toggle between color, exposure and saturation windows respectively. If unfortunately you are as bad at color correction as I am, then you might want to remember option backspace that resets all of your changes in the color correction. To compare your edit before and after applying effects, toggle the visibility of the adjustment layer on and off with V key. Once you are sure that you like the result, you can press ctrl C to copy the layer and then Shift command V to paste its chosen attributes to other clips, or Shift command X to remove them. Honestly, those two are the life saviors. Ok, after all these adjustments, I suddenly realized that I want to use another section of the clip. Luckily, it's super easy to achieve with T shortcut that stands for the trim tool. You can find a better moment by sliding through the clip, or pressing Shift F to match the clip with the original footage in the library browser and find an alternative from there. Command option up arrow allows you to leave the clip up, whereas command option down arrow to override it back. Useful, but makes the magnetic timeline of Final Cut look occasionally frustrating. That's why you can actually hold tilt and drag out the clip with secondary connections out of the primary storyline without affecting other layers. The same can be achieved with the position tool, the shortcut for which is P. Awesome! But still, you can't have a good video without proper sound design. To make the work with audio easier, you can adjust the appearance of the clip based on what you are working with. Control option up and down arrow keys allow to increase or decrease the waveform size, whereas shift command equal minus increase or decrease the appearance of the clip size themselves. To make the work with audio more convenient, I will increase both of them. Personally, adjusting the audio volume with the mouse and handle is frustrating. So if you are like me, you can increase or decrease its volume with Ctrl equal and Ctrl minus shortcuts respectively. To make sure that your sound isn't too loud or too quiet, turn on the audio meters with Shift Command A. They will appear on the right side of your timeline. Normally, a good indicator is to keep overall sound at less than 0 dB, whereas the voice at around minus 6 dB. But it depends on your case. Now here is the tip, don't rush into changing all of the sound effects separately. Instead, assign audio roles to your clips by pressing Ctrl Option E for sound effects, Ctrl Option M for music and Ctrl Option D for dialects, which are set by default. Note that each of these roles have a corresponding color that sets them apart from each other. Then combine them all in a compound clip and press Ctrl S to expand or collapse audio. That shortcut allows to change the length of the video and audio independently, which is extremely useful for the L cut. You are unbalanced. Bested by a girl who would never have as well as Jcad. However, for this case, I want to show you another trick, which is Control Option S that expands or collapses all audio components. These three audio components correspond to our dialogues, effects, and music that we just applied. It's brilliant, since any change made to the component is reflected in each of the audio clips with the corresponding role. For example, we can press Command Option E to apply the default audio effect to all of our dialogues. By default, it's equalizer, but as always, you can change it to something else in the effects tab. Finally, to make sure that your video looks good on the computer, press Shift Command F to preview in full screen. Once you are done, press Command E to export your complete project. By default, it's going to be a master file, but you can change it to other formats by going to Preferences and then to Destinations. And while you are waiting for your video to be rendered, press Command Option key to create your own custom shortcuts. Lastly, shortcut 101. Press like and subscribe command to see even more cool editing tricks in the future. But remember that the first rule of the edit club, we don't talk about edit club.